I will go back to the top as usual and tell what you want to do. I was hearing this the phrase of digitization of power and I felt that I am being injected with this phrase by you. Second thing is that you talked about how China is going back to the past. How China is going back to the, back to the past. And you talked about various uh, religious and cultural revivalism happening all over the world. <coughs> With respect to India, I have not heard the word, the phrase, uh, the sentences about Dalits and Tribals specifically. Yes. Plus, how do you see Dharma as? And as per your painting in your book, which I have gone through, it is clearly stating that Dharma traditions are superior, are superior, and Abrahamic faiths are not equally valid. So, it is clearly in contradiction with the notion of mutual respect that you grab. In, in the whole, in, in all of the books that you have written about. Yeah, I will write. So, so can I can I ask very good, very good question. See, I like this kind of question. Tough question, but give me a tough one. So first is when I talked about aestheticization of power, you felt put on the spot. And uh, I'm sorry it was not intended to anybody personally. I feel I'm also part of this aestheticization of power, maybe elite you. I mean, I, I, I have not, uh, I, gave, I gave up my business as a top of its success. I sold my companies, 20 of them, for one one dollar to the management. Did not put even one share into my family, and I decided I live on a pension of based on the money I already made. So I stopped accumulating further and decided giving up. So, but I'm still part of the elite. May I please answer him? I'm still part of the elite because I I, I feel I have more power, like all of you have. So if I if I say that the aestheticization of power applies to a lot of people beyond just you know the Nazis which is what they were saying and beyond just the Sanskrit uh, people uh, I am in it, you are in it, we are as a root, as a root, uh, have to shoulder that why are we afraid of saying that uh, problem hai. why are you into it is your alter problem hai. okay then China going back to the past is historical fact I mean I am not judging whether they are good or bad this is historical fact there is a there is a difference between scholarship which is descriptive and scholarship which is prescriptive. In prescriptive, you are prescribing and saying, as you want to In descriptive, you are just saying, as you have. That is how things are. So I am doing a lot of my work is descriptive. And I will come to this Dharma versus Abrahamic. It is a descriptive rather than prescriptive scholarship I am doing. But I will come to that in a moment. So China returning to its uh, heritage and its past is a descriptive. I don't know whether there is a good thing. I am not even saying that. I am saying that they feel empowered. They feel part of their nation building is to go back in history and have a historical continuity. A historical grand narrative of China is very important to them. And we do not have such a thing as a historical grand narrative of India. It is just a descriptive fact. Maybe, maybe you don't need one. Maybe you are better off than China. Maybe China is no good and we are going to come out ahead. Maybe so. I doubt it. But I am just making a statement that this is what China's strategy is. That you should have a unified grand narrative of yes. the greatness of China. Then religions are reviving. That is a descriptive fact. I mean, one of the things that happened when the Soviets collapsed is a huge rise of uh, Orthodox Christianity and all kinds of Christianity. And now with Cuba, I mean, there is a huge revival of uh, Christianity there. When, the, when these oppressive uh, oppression of religion is lifted. Religion comes back with a, in a very with a vengeance. So people who are uh, atheists have to ask the question: What is the what is hardwired in the human brain? How, that in spite of education, because the Russians are very educated people, uh, Chinese are very educated people. You cannot say that this is the sign of being primitive and backward. Unko padha likha denge, they won't be religious because religion is superstition and when people get educated and scientific they won't need it that is not the case in fact there are so many conferences that Templeton Foundation sponsors on science and spirituality and Nobel laureates come highly educated people come so in India may have idea which is kind of old baggage of uh, old Marxism from 30-40 years ago you got to update your Marxism to a more recent version because the, the old baggage was that religion is oppressive baggage of the past and primitive and what not and when you progress they won't believe in these things that that baggage still remains in India but in other countries which are some of the most advanced educated countries spirituality is in a big way so this is a statement of this is descriptive of what things are like I'm not saying yes you want to say then uh, this business of Dharma versus Abrahamic Dharma versus Abrahamic my book that you are referring to is not breaking India but being different is another book the whole book is contrast between uh, the Dharmic worldview and the Abrahamic worldview. 
the Abrahamic worldview believes in historical exclusivity and historical uniqueness. The Harmonic worldview believes in something else, which is a, a cyclical time and a revival and new, new, uh, uh, new, new revelations and these kind of things happening all the time. So uh, I'm giving every chapter. I'm giving a contrast between one view and another view, and I'm saying I'm standing in the Dharmic view and giving a view of the other. Now, whether I'm respectful or not, you know, I tell you this. I've had numerous discussions and debates with Christians who know a lot more about Christianity, including Jesuits like uh, uh, Father Clooney, Francis Clooney at Harvard. You should watch those videos and he says this is among the most interesting and important uh, analyses of the, the relationship between these two systems and that every Christian should read this book. This was this is the kind of my the endorsement on my book is from these people. So, I recently had a debate with a Christian scholar in uh, Houston. Some of you might have seen it it's on, the, on the web. You should watch it. So I have no problem with Christians uh, when, I'm having, when I'm having these things. They're inviting me to interfaith events. I just had one in, uh, a few months ago. Uh, but India may, which uh, kind of ignorance about religion and a kind of uh, belief that you have to start off by hating. You have to start off by, to show your credentials, you go to an audience and say, okay, to prove that I'm, I'm, I'm okay, I've pronounced my guilt as a Brahmanical Hindu and I'm guilty man and all my ancestors were guilty. And unless you do that at the very beginning and put your cards on the table, you are going to be accused. This is India a bimari. This is a problem. I don't find this in India. Talk about and when the when you talk about dharma, there is a notion of untouchability attached to it. So how do you do you deal with No, no, wait a second, wait a second. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. So I want to I want to tell you, I want to tell you, I agree, I agree that there is discrimination. I'm not one of those who deny that there is discrimination. I have lived in a discrimination society in the United States for a long time and when I come to India, I see discrimination here also. I see discrimination in most places I go to, okay. So there is discrimination, social discrimination, cultural discrimination, financial discrimination. There is discrimination. I agree with that. So the question is, the question, no, no, no wait a second. The, the, the discrimination by the anglicized neo-Brahmins of today who are social scientists in prestigious universities funded by, funded by the United States is also a form of discrimination we should talk about. Okay. We, should, we, should, we, should, we should talk about, we should talk about how, how the adhikar, how the adhikar or the discourse has shifted to a few people who are very elitists who talk in a literalized language of social sciences which the arm army doesn't understand. If you take your if you take your high flown social sciences theories and you go to the village and tell them, they will think that you are some kind of a pyramid. Okay? So this is this is elitism also. 